Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are in the Rock Full of Brains, a uh, ferment of possibilities out in the wilds of space where we've colonized three asteroids, uncovered a whole bunch of swampy ore fields, and I think actually it's time that we took a little bit of stock. At this point, a thousand and fifty cycles after our start, I think we should take a moment back and think about what it is we actually need to do here. Uh, you can see Reverslin, the asteroid that we started. Started on. We've got lava at the top, we've got coal down below, but what is actually happening here long term? We are draining all this lava away and using it to feed our slicks down, uh, sorry, our um, hatches down below. This is the food source that we've got for a few uh, duplicates that are mostly just turning over some steel here. Uh, so, at some point, we're going to run out of lava. Thankfully, it's uncovering this sulfur geyser, so we could use that to farm some of these spindly grub fruits. You can see they need sulfur for the fertilization, and they also work in synergy with these uh, grub grubs here. So we could actually make quite a nice uh, food supply from this place. Maybe make some sleep wheat as well as we seem to be set up with a nice cold area as here uh, of course sleep wheat let's have a look there we go uh, it does need there we go found one that's actually alive uh, Disney dirt and water two things that I'm actually not making here at all I mean I suppose technically I am making some clay which we could probably cook down into dirt somehow but these are all fairly long-term processes. We'll leave Reverslin for now. I think it's in a good holding pattern. Unlike Pyaxlin, if we have a look at the temperature overlay here, you can see this place is getting hot. This is the place with the... Uh, the petroleum boiler that we've got here this is working incredibly well though it is starting to lead to a secondary sort of knock-on problem if you will and not just the fact that our petroleum generator is too hot how did that it didn't get hot it got some crude oil fed into it I that's that's less worrisome that's fine that came from when we were trying to sort out everything that happened down below but at some point we're going to stop processing the crude oil down here and this is going to start filling up that's not too much a problem we can separate this off and maybe pass this down uh, I think I'd like to dump it separately here rather than feeding it into this line uh, then we need to deal with the polluted water that actually can carry on doing what it's doing but will the slicks be fed yes yeah, suddenly this just becomes slicks eating the carbon dioxide okay so the, the, the next thing we need to do here of course is to move that crude oil down that's something to bear in mind uh, we also actually the, the temperature was a big problem over on Pyaxlin we uh, we could probably fix that. If, if I uh, see here, in fact, let's have a look at the temperature overlay. You can see that this orange, not ideal. I don't think I want everywhere this sort of blue color, but the green, the green seems rather nice. If we could keep the green going at 20 degrees, that seems like an ideal temperature to keep the base at. But unfortunately, this thermal aqua tuner working absolute overtime it has not stopped turning over for many many hundreds of cycles now uh, so somehow we're gonna have to try and bust our way in here break this one down rearrange the piping to move it over one to the left we might even have to set up an exosuit or something like that so our duplicates can survive in the heat and then try and build a second one uh, which we either set up as a separate line or we just put them both onto the same water line and extend that out I think these are these are also strong plans Blagolia though this is where I want to start today with the big overhauls we are on the very very verge of working towards space age materials but our materials that we've got in here are not being shipped anywhere oh look at the 20 23 degree materials we do have 26 degree wow this little two blocks that I put in here have completely solved my aluminium problems. I was uh, having troubles where this was overheating. I, I don't think that's a problem anymore. Wow, okay, that, that was good. I literally just put those two blocks in there to hold on to some of the heat, uh, to uh, some of the cold, I suppose, technically, to stabilize the heat. But the, we're not shipping this cobalt or this aluminium or indeed this gold anywhere. It is just staying on this little asteroid and that's not doing any of us any good. I do, however, have this space above here where I feel like we could maybe move their, move their mess hall, possibly make a proper great hall somewhere. Uh, 
uh, and have a, a delivery network up here of, let me look into the rocketry, uh, we have these interplanetary launchers. These can fire little bullets from our rock, let me show you which one we're on, Blagolia over here, to any of the other places that we choose to target. We've only got these two being inhabited now, so I feel like that's a good place to start. Now, do we have one launcher per place or one launcher per place per material? I think I'm just going to go one per place and then we can have shipping lines feeding into the bottom here. I'm not sure if I have a shipping uh, duplicate available right now, but oh no, it turns out not. But we can we can retool. We can make this work for the people that we have. There's also something else I want to do. Oh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't here. I was over on Piaxin. I'm full of plans, full of plans. See this uh, chlorine gas vent here? We somehow need to get a whole bunch of puffs from B Blagolia. Uh, where, where are they? The, we, we had loads just kind of kicking around. Ideally a puff print, that would be nice. Maybe if we could get a... Um an egg and fire it back via the interplanetary launcher. Uh, we could feed them just solely on the chlorine gas and make one of these guys. Or ideally make a make a lot of them. I'd like to keep a whole host of them together. Uh, these are squeaky pufflets and they will eat chlorine and uh, output bleach stone. I don't have a renewable source of bleach stone and that, that would be very handy if we could have one. I also feel like I'm probably going to need to do this. I thought I'd quickly check the uh, the blueprints, and it turns out I've run into more of a conundrum than I thought I would. I think I'm going to go for the snazzy suit. We can make food wherever we like, so yeah, let's let's go for that. Uh, none of my duplicates are wearing anything nice. Goddard does seem to be the person who keeps running into trouble, though. So if we just click on our snazzy suit there and be like, hey, Goddard, there you are. You're not even wearing a hat. That's a bit sad. Uh, improve grilling, too. Good, good, good work. Fix that now. Okay, so we're reappropriating one mess hall for a redistribution point. What about the great hall? What do we need? We need mess tables, no industrial machinery, minimum size of 32 tiles, decor of plus 20. I mean, we can do this. Let me just see what uh, what, what size we have. Uh, it said 30 tiles, right? 28 tiles? Uh, that that's That's more than enough room right there. 32 tiles, 32 tiles. So if I just like dig out this sort of, sort of space, that, that should be fine, right? And then we just like put a bunch of tiles around it. But whilst the duplicates are opening up this little bit of space here, I would like to thank and tell you about the people that allow me to excavate a little bit of time out of my schedule for this particular activity. That's right, my patrons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you will see a list of names, a list of names of the beautiful, beautiful people that have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation so that me and my channel can continue on into the future as comfortably as these duplicates. So really, from the very bottom of my heart, guys, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we've got a little bit of sweeping left to do, but I think it's actually fine for us to start thinking about how we're going to move everything down here. Let's give them a lot of space. We only really have uh, to worry about three duplicates, but I'm going to allow for four. I'm also not sure what recreation building I want to put down. I don't know whether we can find the recreation, like the party line phone can be used by one duplicate to chat with themselves or with other duplicates in different locations. I mean, the mechanical surfboard, uh, some water gets splashed on the floor during use, probably not that one. Does the soda fountain count? There are different things. I do like the jukebox. The jukebox is a nice easy one. Let's put that down in the middle of the room there. We also have some other things we need to do to make sure that it actually matches the specifications of the Great Hall. A decor item of plus 20. I can definitely do that. I, I kind of don't believe you, Swan Lever. You're just, you're there. Maybe we should put, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I've been thinking about this for a little bit of time now. It's not in there. Maybe in furniture. Base. It got moved into base. That was in one of the re most recent um, updates. Moved the drywall out of the utilities into the uh, into the base materials. But I just think that's okay. You know, I, I kind of understand what they're doing. I'm just kind of not prepared for it. Uh, how am I going to put a whole bunch of uh, decor down? I'm not entirely certain. We can start with some crown molding, of course. Go all the way through. But without a proper... Um, artiste in the group. I'm not sure what we can do to actually push this up high enough. I'm not sure if it needs to be 20 in common or 20 all across or just one item of 20, uh, but I'll, I'll have a look. I'll see what we get. I mean, it's worth putting plants down anyway, right? Just a small moment's thought, of course, given over to... Oh, no, maybe not that route. Uh, given over to how we're going to power the jukebox. Okay, that this should be fine. I hope this is fine. Uh, and then we can start ripping down, like, these mess halls, uh, mess tables over here. Move the, uh, the... 
refrigerator down below. I think that's also a good idea. Can we have two refrigerators? Well, I mean, we can, but do we need two refrigerators? That one's a bit more of a question. Okay, so the Great Hall is mostly finished, but if we have a look at the room overlay here, we can see that we are missing a decor item of plus 20. If I come down into the furniture items, the only thing that really gives us, if I have a look at the wall pot, it gives us a decor. It doesn't even say that it's giving us a decor boost here. Uh, if we go to the aero pot, we've got a deco, deco of 10, um, a 5 for the sculpting block, 10 for the large sculpting block, and then we've got these three at the end here, the ice, the marble, and the metal block. They all actually do give me 20, so I'm going to pop down a me uh, marble block at the doorway and a metal block over by the fridge and that should hopefully give us everything that we need for this to become an actual great haul these guys not working very fast up the top here but i think we can live with that i think i also want to put down a single conveyor receptacle it's not actually a receptacle it's the loader my bad uh, and we're going to come up here and we're going to not do any sort of fancy branching or anything like that this is just going to come up and it's going to split whatever i put in there between the two uh, two boxes here. I don't know if that's how I want to do it. I don't know if uh, as we get into the future and we find out exactly what we want being what we want to be sent off into each area. Maybe I want to end up putting down a conveyor rail for each one. Swan Levitt, you you're not actually starving. You're just hanging out in the airlock for no apparent reason. Yeah, as I say, this might end up changing in the future, but for now we'll we'll just do it like this. I'm also going to deconstruct this fridge. Let's get that out of here. I'm also giving big thought to moving this whole contraption that picks up hydrogen and passes it on to the hydrogen generator here uh, and putting it up to the new highest place in the base but that might take some time to, to work out and also whilst i've got this running over on piaxin i've asked for the oil that is being produced by my slicksters here to get a new pipeline put in it's going to take it all the way out and round and down to where we want to dump our oil down below here so that should work out pretty well for us i could just i could just leave this running in the background at some point i might even start cutting these lines down getting rid of the oil refineries but at the moment this seems to be all that we need to do let's go back over to blagolia because we need to um we need to stress goddard out i think that's how that's going to work we also need to start moving some more of these um power lines are around i do notice i do notice that we don't actually need this telescope anymore so we could get rid of the telescope the power line for the telescope and maybe even the uh, oxygen line that runs up there there's no maybe about it definitely the oxygen line as well uh, so if we move this pump up to here have an oxygen sensor over why not a little bit further away it's not oxygen it's a hydrogen sensor rip down this telescope oh, i don't know what else we've got we've got we've got a whole bunch of piping here that could also be ripped down okay as far as i'm aware we should have everything we need we've got a solid block of gold over here it's an incomplete artwork and we will get someone to get around to it at some point and we've got a marble obsidian over here sorry a block of marble in the form of obsidian over here check the room overlay we've got a great hall all right great now now the the, the next great thing we need to do is to get rid of these i'm just going to ask for the highest priority because people keep liking to run around and try and sort out all the stuff at the top here which you know is fine but swan levitt keeps trying to f make this the time time it takes her to go all the way around and up here she can do a little bit of digging and then has to run back to get the breath back so it's it's not it's not been working out quite so well for her a bit of a bit of a wasted character at the moment obviously i would like everybody to be full efficiency but that's uh, that's not my game style is it I've realised almost instantly that this is not the way to do it, having the one input for the two uh, different destinations. Because, of course, one of the things that I need to start moving almost immediately is all the eggshell that we've got. And we, we only want to send eggshell to reverse lin so that it can be processed into lime and then turned into steel, which we seem to have going, turning over quite nicely at the moment. And I would like that to continue on. Uh, so, yeah, th th we're going to have to do it via this method here. That's, that's no problem. We'll just say to ship both. I mean, the closest one is... Mm, closest one is going to get priority for all the aluminium and gold. I, I don't know whether that's what we want. It's what we're going to live with for now.
So I've just noticed a small problem with the uh, power here. Our natural gas geyser has gone dormant. It's going to be active in uh, 20 cycles, but it's okay. We've got this one to back it up, right? No, next dormancy in zero seconds. The moment this guy stops its little activation cycle, he is going to be also dead. Not the end of the world. We do also have other ways of making natural gas. We've got like this little slither over here. It's not quite as good as over on Pyaxon where it just falls out of all the machinery constantly. Oh man, we need to uh, definitely try and see if we can work on that at all. Uh, wh what's going on with the piping over here? We got one up there. I mean, maybe if I wait, does that actually connect? Okay, yeah, let, let's let's move this over here and hopefully. Ooh. Franklin, come to show me that it was not necessary. This was totally reachable. Everything seems to be going well over here. Just making sure. Okay, back to Blagolia and the ensuing power crisis. I feel like we need to expand these rooms out. If this is not going to be active for the next 20 cycles, let me check and make sure. Right, there is a filter on this, so we could totally bust this back open, make this larger, perhaps even like this large we, we could make it pretty big pretty big and then it would just be a storage area for extra gas we could even even bring it down and across and have like this whole huge area here i think that might actually be what i do here but this one you don't need to know about i'm, I'm just going to keep it burning over in the background maybe we'll figure out how to move this airlock system down or do we just bust in through the bottom of the airlock system deconstruct deconstruct two tiles over here and then we can just start digging like this i think this might this might actually be the way i do it the reason that I'm thinking so hard about the power systems we have here is because we need to set up a new power system. We need to come into the pa the, the radiation, we need a red bolt generator, and we need to get things from the green triangles here to the yellow, uh, white circles, not yellow circle, white circles around there. Uh, that should be relatively easy, something just like blub. I don't know how many of these we're going to be able to power though, because if we have a look at the F2, it doesn't tell us. Okay, that's fine. How about if we have a look in here? It tells us that we need 480 watts each one of these. So that means we can at most support four of them on a gold line like so but the big problem we have here is how do we cool all of this down we've done this before we've put airflow tiles underneath and then use some drywall in the background b there we go to copy that uh, and then we could just drop some other liquids down on top of it probably going to be dropping uh petroleum we don't have petroleum here so we will be dropping polluted water and then figuring out a way of getting that in on the, on the cooling loop which uh wait f6 sorry is is this loop here so we could easily bring it up bring it across bring it down and not bust anything that that's good i do like it when we can do this without breaking anything uh we're gonna need some radiant pipes gold of course are the winner there okay great that's 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 really good that's that's worked out really, really well okay on reverse lin here let's have a look we've got some backflow going it comes up to here these guys aren't building this way as fast as i would like but it does look like it's all going to be sorted soon enough uh, the reason that i'm so intent on getting this set up is because whilst these are being depressurized you can see that we are starting to run out this is telling me every now and then that it doesn't have enough liquid and if not enough liquid is passing through we're not cooling down this area fast enough and uh we we could end up with some pretty pretty severe oh yeah look at that pretty severe heating on the go and that is definitely not what i want so i'm actually going to come along and do hey this please please ah oh, it's happening anyway this is totally not what i wanted to have see ah oh, this is really bad this is this is really bad it's got to be these tiny little blobs coming along and then they get overwhelmed by heat ah oh, that's how are we going to get in there? How are we going to fix this? Okay, we're going to go for the somewhat haxy attitude of reloading from the morning and seeing if we can't induce a little bit more panic onto the building of this line and hopefully actually that will be enough to fix it let's have a look at the f6 screen here okay so this this is good so far uh, there we go there there are the problems they are a coming let's see if we can't just get these guys to uh, build as much of the line as possible first and then hopefully we won't have the problems that we just had 
Okay, last pipe is being put in place. Looking at our FC... Ooh, there's some bits here that are definitely smaller than I would like, but the flow has started. Let's speed our way through this if we can. Oh, we might actually not be able to 100% save this. We might even have to bring this to a bit of a halt. Maybe turn the temperature down or turn the, uh, the pumps off. Uh, to try and get in there. Okay, so that now now we've got liquids flowing. We've got as much coming in as is being pumped out. So um, I'm I'm hoping that we're not going to break this pipe entirely. That's 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 the big worry here. That this just pipe this pipe just gets broken. Look at these tiny little blobs here. That's that's really not what I want. Um, yeah, there's some heat damage. That's that's big shames. That's actually the real big... Oh, that, that one made it through. Okay, this one might be a problem because it's coming through after a gap. Okay, that's also good. This one makes it. Okay, hopefully we're now just in a situation... No, not for that one. Not for that one. Hopefully we're in a situation where not too much gets broken and we're actually able to carry on through. If we could just get to this last little blob here without destroying my pipe. Okay, that's... That's good. That's good. Like, emergency diverted, I think, maybe? I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. This up here is becoming a bit of a problem. We are definitely having a situation. This was supposed to uh, collect all of the gas blobs together. But you know what? We've got enough output, um, output pumps here that I don't think we need this anymore. We could probably try and just, like, fuse it across. Or I just put a knot gate in. Uh, and leave it constantly on. One or the other, I don't know at the moment. At the moment, there's a little bit of chlorine back there. And that chlorine is the thing that we're detecting. If any more chlorine comes through this pipe, then we will lose uh, the the on-off. Look, that this is where it's coming from. There's just the smallest amount ticking over there. But I think, I think we're fine. I think... We're back into crisis averted mode. Okay, that's good. Black back to Blagolia. Uh, I mean, I was I was talking about like some sort of power systems, right? It's so, something like that. Uh, so radiation. We we want four of these. I I need to reset up that whole thing that I just did. <laughs> Okay, one of the things that we're going to have to get done eventually is to get these uh, shipping rails put into place. So I've come up to skills. Uh, is it Faraday who can't build? Someone is not very good at building. Okay, cannot learn these, so it's not Faraday. Goddard then, my friend. Uh, you're going to have to go all the way up to mechatronics engineer. Good, good luck with your stress, sir. <laughs> And of course, because Goddard doesn't like building, we're going to have to turn them all the way up to max uh, max priority just to make sure he actually gets them done. Maybe we should have made Faraday the cook. Okay, now we have the problem of power. And I think what I'm going to do is actually disconnect all of these from this particular line. And we're going to run it off the same one that is running the, uh, the cooling over here. This should not, hopefully coincide with uh, cooling at the same time as sending these guys off. Though the cooling is constantly happening, we do only take uh, 1,200. Uh, and even if both of these fire at the same time, that's only going to take us up to 400, 680. So that, that should hopefully be fine. The big problem, of course, is uh, getting all of this laid down up here. We've hit the uh, somewhat awkward stage where we haven't quite got enough heat in the tank to uh, see us through. It's going to erupt in three cycles over here on Pi Accident with my uh, my boiler. We're about to actually uh, turn up. Well, I have in fact turned off the system when I noticed that we were building up a backlog of crude oil here. One of the things I'd really like to do is get in and deconstruct this ladder so I can set up a temperature gauge. If it drops below 398 or something like that, turn this off. I think that would be a very handy system. Unfortunately, we're con uh, constantly flooded with natural gas out here with the three oil wells at the moment. So that is a little bit of a problem. Maybe if we fill up uh, all the way up to the hydro sensor, which with the addition of the oil from over here has been no problem whatsoever filling up, uh, then it should be fine. Why do we have a bunch of... Ah, so uh, over on... Um, over on Blagolia, we've, we've totally run out of power. This means I cannot even scrub Goddard anymore. So I'm building a few solar panels. I don't like building solar panels over here because the natural gas processing is my source of water, which means I'm about to run into some other problems as well. Uh, so I'm going to throw up uh, as many solar panels as I can build. I don't actually have enough glass to build anymore. Uh, and we need to try and figure out how to get more glass over here. In fact, we know how to get more glass over here but I don't want this to become a permanent installation so I think it might just be something that I build and then rip down later 
Now this boiler is up and running. I'm absolutely terrified of it. Turns out it is a beast. You've got to keep it running. I'm not sure how I would go about putting it into shutdown mode. Obviously, I would turn the oil off and make sure the doors are constantly open and that would stop the heat flowing across. But there would definitely be some time where it has to cool itself down. Between the eruptions would definitely be the winner of the situations to do that in. Oh, and uh, I feel like we need to be thinking about that at some point because I've got so much petrol in here and so much crude oil starting to back up. This one little volcano cannot deal with the whole thing, and we're, we're just not—we're not chewing enough. We're not chewing enough petroleum up. We—we we are. Um, we are getting through it, but not quite at the rate I was hoping. Okay, now it's back up and running. 400 degree ladder. Surely that crude oil... Ah, it's 403 where it starts picking up, right? Hmm. Maybe we do want to just push the temperature up a little higher just to kickstart it back up because I'm worried about the amount of liquid that's going to flow out of there. Uh, let's... I mean, 410 is pretty high. 410 is pretty high. Let's go up to 414 or something. I'm not sure how much temperature is going to actually transfer across. We've got 500s and stuff like that. Okay, 414. Why is this... Oh, man, this this needs to, uh, to pick it up and pretty quick. Of course, the thing I'm worried about is the crude oil falling back down this route where it will uh, never never be converted. Uh, 402 is pretty good. We're looking for 403, of course. Just cut out a little bit of the uh, the autosave there. Oh, there we go. All right, brilliant. Finally, we, we've, got, we've got it back up to working condition. Okay, so really we should be detecting the amount of magma here and doing something when we run out of magma. I'm not sure exactly what needs to happen, but I do know... This is something that needs to happen. And bam, three solar panels in place. Unfortunately, we're only making uh, 0.6 kilowatts, which is, is not a great deal, but it does keep everything turning over. We get, get, get to fill the smart battery here, get Goddard de-skilled de so we can stop creeping up that stress meter there. Uh, I have, or in fact, I should be... Uh, if we come up to the consumables, uh, setting down Goddard to actually eat some of the uh, the cooked seafood we've been making. We we'll probably should give that to a lot of other people as well, but, I mean, do we actually need Goddard to be scrubbed if that's the case? We're going to do it anyway. Uh, back to the skills as Goddard has been scrubbed, and we want to make sure that he can do things like... Have I got Goddard? Yes. Like the grilling, uh, he needs to be able to carry stuff. Let's give him improved strength as well, and uh, give him a little hat. Little hat's always important. Suddenly realising the fragility of my cooling system. What's the hydrogen at at the moment? 40 degrees. I'm hoping that this will all just balance out for the next five cycles. Five cycles. This is going to erupt oh, quite a lot and there's still a lot of energy in there. Maybe we'll just put a steam turbine back on top of this thing at some point. Let me show you a little trick I learned. We get some coal, we put it on a, a temperature shift plate, and we put it there at the middle of the uh, the cobalt volcano. We uh, we now go ahead and get someone, anyone, to just come along and make this delivery. All right, Faraday, thanks. And now we have a temperature shift plate back there made of coal. When the coal gets over a temperature of, let's see, th 300 degrees, let's say, uh, which, I, I remind you, the cobalt spits out, is, is that right? Where, where's it? its information? 2,200. Uh, so it should then turn that coal into a tile of refined carbon, I hope. And we'll have um, clogged that up until everything starts to tick over again. Oh, I didn't see it happen, but just like that. There is the refined carbon that should hopefully be making this over pressure. It doesn't tell us at the moment what its status is, but that should stop all of the heat coming spilling out. And I could just uh, just give it a dig and that will uh, that will get rid of it. That's a good way of uh, clogging up your volcanoes if you ever need to. This guy, of course, not doing anything for the next 30 cycles. 12 cycles here and 50, 50 cycles here. Okay. Uh, all right. So it turns out, yes, I should probably just put a, uh, a steam room over the top of this. I kind of didn't want to do it. This is a major pathway. I suppose we could make this the major pathway, just up above, and then this could be a utilities corridor. That, that might also work. 
But aside from burning heat issues, we've actually got one of these Red Bolt generators up and ready to go. It's producing Red Bolts, which I want to send over to this one, where we're going to change its destination to not uh, to play actually no over to reverse we want to send some stuff from uh, here from blagolia to reverse and of course the thing that we're looking to send is oh uh, where is it it's in here somewhere i'm hoping organic eggshells we want to send all the eggshells the power situation is a problem one that we are going to have to deal with next time because i have run out of time with that i will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen we got this whole system up and ready to go and next time i hope to show you it up and functioning uh we've got some other things that we need to do we need to make the uh, squeaky puff farm with the chlorine gas vent that we've got over here we need to try and make sure that this our slick farms really are only surviving off of petroleum generators at the moment so maybe i'll get rid of this coal generator and spread it across these oil refineries are a bit superfluous now that we have the petroleum boiler running uh, what seems to be a good why is this why is this off i'm a little bit scared of why this is settled down i'm sure i turned this back on but it looks like i had actually discovered the holding pattern that we were looking for earlier oh, but i will see you then when we're gonna do all of those other things Bye. Yeah, maybe we should push some lava around. I'm trying to push all the lava around.